This is lesson two of the Algebra Basics series. And today's lesson is Patterns, Rules, and Tables. This is an important building step for getting further advanced with linear equations. And it ties into the previous video about linear equations, lesson one. And how it works is patterns can come in different forms. I've created an example here to look at, but there are many different ways to see patterns, different types of uh, examples that can be used, such as in this example, it will be sticks. In other examples, you may have blocks or dots, etc., different types of shapes that are laid out in a pattern. And what the algebra student should be able to do is see the pattern, see how each step is related. And what's important to note is first, what number is the shape or first figure or uh, the initial one. So this is the first one, first shape, it's a triangle. It is number one. And the thing I'm looking at is the figure number, which is figure number one. And I'm also looking at the number of sticks in that figure. Okay? So I count one, two, three sticks. So I'm going to document that. In figure one, there are three sticks. And I do the same thing with the next one. So if this is first, this is second, this must be figure number two. I'm going to write two up here. And I count the number of sticks. One, two, three, four, five. Figure two has five sticks. And then repeat with figure three, the next one. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sticks. Figure three has seven sticks. And I also wrote the same table again on the right, but using different terms. So instead of saying figure and sticks, I use n and f of n. n still means the figure number, which were 1, 2, and 3. And f of n just means the number of sticks. Again, same as last time, 3, 5, 7. Besides this way, I can also write my table using x's and y's, which will be seen in linear equations. So x this time would be the figure number, 1, 2, 3. And y would be the number of sticks, 3, 5, 7. Okay, it's the exact same table written three times using different, let's call it headings, okay? Instead of figure and sticks, I use these two other examples, but they all are the same thing. Now here's the part about finding rules. Okay, I look at the pattern, then I find the rule. And I use my table to find the rule. So what I did first was I marked this little arrow to show the change from stick number. So from 3 to 5, that's a change of 2. 5 to 7, that's a change of 2. On the left, 1 to 2, this is the change in the figure number. That's only a change of 1. Okay, what this means is from figure 1 to figure 2, it just increased by 1. That's why I write positive 1. From 2 to 3, it increases by 1. That's why, that's why I write positive 1. Now, to create a rule from this table, I first use these two numbers together. Okay? In the last video, I mentioned m is slope. I can use those numbers 2 and 1 to write the slope. I put this change on the right side first, then the change on the left side. So 2 over 1 is equal to 2. Okay, this will be important in x and y, okay? Slope using x and y is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, that triangle right there means change. So again, this is the exact same table, so it's 2 over 1. Okay, now what's important when finding the rule is to know how does this input right here, 1, determine this output. Okay, so there are three sticks in figure one. How do I get from one to three? Okay, some people make the mistake of going across. How do I get from three to five or five to seven or one to two? That's not enough. You need to know how to get from the x to the y or the f the n to the f of n or the figure to the number of sticks. So to do that, I see I use one example. Okay, there are three in this table, I'm using the first one, one and three. So, what I need to find out is, how do I get from one to three 
using this number, this slope too, okay? There's gonna be multiplying involved, okay? It's always gonna be that way. You're gonna multiply the slope times the first number, okay? The figure number one. Two times one to get to three, okay? The goal is to get to three. To do that, well, I see what two times one is. Two times one is two. To get to three, I have to add one, okay? Two plus one is three. So that's the rule. I use the slope m2, then I write, okay, I can use n or x, either is okay, but th this time I'm going to write n, 2n, and then after I multiply it by 2, I added 1, okay, 2n plus 1, okay, and just to check it, I'm going to do another example using another pair from this table. For my second example, I'm going to use 2, 5 instead of 1, 3. So, I use my slope 2, 2 times, and my goal is to get, using 2, I have to get to 5, okay? So, when I put in 2, I should get 5 at the end. So, I see so far I have 2 times 2 to get to 5. 2 times 2 is 4. I need to add 1 to get to 5. And it's consistent with my rule, which was 2 and here, I'll write it up here, 2n plus 1. Okay, that is the rule, 2n plus 1. And looking at a picture example, 2n plus 1, let's see it. Okay, if I did 2 times here, 3, which is 6, and add 1, I should get 7. And there are exactly 7 sticks in this picture. So it works.